Hello, are you really struggling right now? If so, please, please, please watch this video. Hi, my name is Sheridan, and I can only guess that if you're watching this, it's because you're feeling pretty desperate, you're struggling, maybe you even feel like ending it all, that life simply isn't worth it, and you just want all this horrible pain to go away. Well, I can tell you that after six years experience as a Samaritan and more than 20 years experience in listening to people's problems and talking about their mental health issues, I really hope I can offer you some support and help you now and give you a few tips and hopefully some reassurance that you can be okay. I will say this, I have seen many people come out of the darkest, darkest times and go on to lead happy and fulfilling lives and I'm sure that you too can do the same. I think the first thing to reassure you of is that you are not alone. We live in a society where people are tending to feel it's best to walk around looking as though they're coping and so many many people are, are struggling inside and there's a civil war going on in their heads. I think the other thing is we judge ourselves incredibly harshly. We actually judge ourselves by a completely different set of standards from those that we would judge anybody by, even our worst enemies. So we're so cruel to ourselves. I think it's very tempting to say, please don't judge me. I judge myself quite harshly enough as it is. And that just feeds the, the little voice in our head that screams at us and tells us that we're, we're not good enough and that we're, we're failing and that we don't fit in to this life. You are not alone and there are always people who are willing to help you. You are loved, you are enough and people do care about you and the people who love you, love you unconditionally. You don't have to be a certain way or achieve a certain thing in order to be loved. Love, as I've just said, is unconditional and you are loved because of who you already are. Let me talk about two types of depression. The first is reactive, and I think this is what most people can relate to. Something bad happens and we feel down. Someone dies, we lose our job, our relationship goes wrong, we have a breakup. And the natural response to that would be to feel down or depressed or low and possibly feel we can't cope. If there is something in your life that you know is the cause of why you're feeling the way you are right now, then I think sometimes the thing to do is to take the road less traveled. In other words, face this thing head on and deal with it, however uncomfortable that may feel. Because if there is actually a core reason why you're feeling depressed, then it's worth making the shift you need to make in order to change that situation and make things okay from now on. If someone has died, if you've uh, come out of a breakup, then there's a grieving process you have to go through. And that sometimes we can't hurry. It's natural, it's natural to feel depressed. It's natural to feel angry. It's natural to feel guilty. And all those feelings can be very unhelpful. But I think sometimes you just have to allow yourself those feelings and give it time and, and kind of ride it out and know that everything is temporary. The only constant thing in life is change and things will change and feel different for you too. But if it's something you know you can actually tackle yourself, then I would urge you to do that. So we've talked about reactive depression, when you feel low, but you can attach it to a cause. Well, as I say, two options there, either deal with that cause or wait it out if it's something like grief or an emotional response to something that's happened. The other type of depression is not reactive. It's when we feel a kind of black hole of despair, when life just feels completely rubbish and perhaps more scary than that, we can't even attach it to a thing. We can't attach it to a happening. It's not because of anything. And as I say, this can be so, so scary. And sometimes this can lead to a diagnosis. Maybe you've been diagnosed as having bipolar disorder or borderline personality disorder or acute depression, anxiety, and so on and so forth. 
in which case in these instances it's more a question of learning how to manage the depression managing how you feel and that's about lots of things but one of the prime areas here is self-care it's taking time for you it's taking time to relax to pamper yourself look after yourself and allow yourself those low points and you are riding a kind of roller coaster of emotion which of course is incredibly exhausting i think as well as self-care it's really good to stay active i don't necessarily mean go to the gym three four five times a week but just do something take the dog for a walk go for a walk just get out and about and do something routine also can help a lot if you have things that you do at set times on set days of the week then the, the brain likes this perhaps my favorite way uh, of, of getting out of a low point is to actively engage in something creative and it's scientifically impossible for the the anxious unhelpful part of your brain which we sometimes call the left hand side of our brain it's impossible for that to function at the same time as the right hand side of our brains which is where we are spontaneous creative loving and mentally active in a in a meaningful way so connecting with other people for example and so what i do if i'm feeling a bit anxious or a bit down is i'll jump on my piano when i say jump on it i don't mean bounce up and down on it i mean play it uh write a song sing something um for some of you it might be cook it might be do the garden it might be paint a picture or as i've just said if you can meaningfully engage with other people and by meaningfully engage i mean talk to people but i don't mean with a mask on i mean allow your real self to be shown there is huge power in vulnerability and if we dare to drop that mask of needing to appear completely sorted which i'm not sure is a real thing anyway um and just dare to be honest and open uh, and as i say drop that guard then we are far more able to form a meaningful and empathetic connection with other people i find there is huge power in empathy there's a, a, a phrase a, a well-worn phrase that a problem shared is a problem halved and never is this more true that in the case of talking about our feelings and if we find as we so often do that people go yeah yeah gosh i know yeah yeah i've had exactly that feeling oh oh me too it's incredibly reassuring and really heartening and then we feel less isolated so back to you you can overcome the way you are feeling now but you do need to take personal responsibility for the way you are feeling it's incredibly easy when we're feeling vulnerable and depressed to shift the blame onto other people and somehow make our happiness conditional on how they behave which brings me to an incredibly important thing called separating tasks and what this means is your task in life is to be a good human is to do the best give the best and just be the best you you possibly can be to say and do the right things be in be the way you mean to be and incidentally if you make mistakes please forgive yourself i've made millions of those so we've all got skeletons in the cupboard we've all got things we've done in the past that we might regret let that go forgive yourself but as i say you can only ultimately be responsible for how you behave and obviously trying to be the best you possible that's your task so we need to separate that task from the other person's task everybody else's tasks their task is how they choose to respond to how you are that's their task and not your task and you cannot make you cannot afford to make your happiness dependent on whether other people will behave in the way you choose them to if we do that we're making our happiness conditional on something we cannot change and the only thing you can change is you now the biggest battle that many of us face is intrusive thoughts that's the the inner dialogue that goes on in our heads and the, the thing is this is caused oh we inherit some of this and we grow up and maybe our parents say things or friends at school or uh, whatever has happened to us in our life forms a series of stories 
that we then repeatedly tell ourselves. So we're telling ourselves a story. It's not necessarily based on reality, but we are telling ourselves a story. And these stories form your belief about who you are. As I've said on other videos, and I suggest you watch the video on silencing the little voice in your head, I'll put a link above. We need to recognise that the little voice that screams at you constantly is not you. It's only your little voice or the baggage that, as I say, you've accumulated over years and years and years. And for many people, this is the most helpful thing because we do have that inner dialogue. We do have those cruel, uh, invasive thoughts that can dominate how we think and how we feel. And they have absolutely nothing to do with who you actually are. No time is perfect to make this change. But if you're really struggling right now, I believe in you. I have seen people like you come through this and come out the other side, smiling, content, and really loving their lives. That's what you deserve. You deserve to be happy. And that inner dialogue will tell you that you don't deserve it. You don't deserve help, that you feel you're a burden on everybody else. Trust me, you are not a burden on anyone who loves you. And as I've already said, those who care about you love you unconditionally and don't need you to change or behave a certain way in order to retain that love. Know you are deserving, know you are loved and know that everything is temporary. You are way, way stronger than you think. I'm going to leave it there, but there are plenty of other videos on this channel my name is Sheridan Coldstream and I'd love you to subscribe to this channel so that hopefully I can offer more support to you and hit that notifications bell so that you can see more similar videos. But for now, that's all I want to say. I wish you a much better day than maybe the day you were expecting. And uh, please spread the word and let's all be kind to each other and get through what I know is a very difficult time for you. Thank you very much.